through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At our Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, our Father, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always freed from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of God now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us share with each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord. Lord.
cuerpo, vida del mundo, y el que coma de mi carne, prenda vida eterna, tendrá edad eterna. Time now is 4.03 and we're watching communion happen for the installation of Bishop Luzanski. I'm here with Father Bill Hamilton. My name is Rich Tedimer. And uh, it has been uh, quite the service, hasn't it, Father? It really has. Uh, I think his uh, presentation of his homily, uh, the multiple languages, uh, reaching out to everyone uh, in the four counties uh, of Western Massachusetts uh, as a shepherd, as a healer, a consoler, a reconciler. I think those are all great things that he really wants to uh, bring us together again in a very, very special way. And of course, this Eucharist that we see now again is the unifying factor of receiving uh, the body and blood of Christ and then in turn becoming that presence of Christ uh, in our diocese and in our world and our local communities. Bishop Rosansky says that he knew leaving Baltimore, his lifelong home, would be difficult, but he says that with the grace of God, he's ready to serve the people of the Diocese of Springfield. We're confident that uh, wherever God calls us, as priests or as bishops, that we're ready to serve. So when I heard that I would be going to Springfield, Massachusetts, uh, I was a little shocked because I knew nothing of the area, nothing of the diocese, but Confident, like, like all of my other assignments, I would certainly have the grace of God to go with me and to help me to serve his people. And now it's his time to learn. Exactly, and I think the, the faith that's involved uh, for each of us as we accept the assignments uh, from our, our bishop, and obviously his, his bishop is the Bishop of Rome, uh, who has now assigned him to a new area uh, to take upon a new community. Uh, develop his uh, pastoral skills even more so than he has in the past 10 years and to reach out and proclaim the faith strong and vibrantly and, uh, and joyously as he continues to remind us. And in fact as far as specific plans for the diocese goes Bishop Rosansky has made it clear through his many interviews that he has set no agenda. He wants to listen and learn from the people here. What I owe everyone in coming to Springfield is first to learn about Springfield, to get to know the people of Springfield, to get to know the church of the Diocese of Springfield. And then, as I get to learn about that and work with the priests and the deacons, the religious men and women, and, and with the laity, then I think together we forge a direction uh, for God's people. Father, we also have the uh, coat of arms that um, Bishop Rosansky has selected. We can actually take a look at that now, and you can tell us what the significance of the coat of arms is. Sure. Uh, the coat of arms of a bishop uh, held back to the uh, days when uh, religious houses had 
seals uh, and such. And we're, we're not uncommon on banners and some personal, some related to saints. And so uh, the left half of a uh, bishop's shield features the crest of the Diocese of Springfield. It's on the silver field with the four round bells uh, with the wavy bars uh, appropriately representing the springs of water that he spoke about in his homily. Uh, the cross, the red cross, represents the cross of St. Michael, uh, the patron of the Diocese of Spe Springfield, and also his personal patron, uh, which is uh, Mitchell, is a form of Michael. And against, um, and he, of course, Michael being the fighter against evil, uh, for whom our cathedral is named as well. And then the Springfield crest is attached to uh, the one that was created for him when he became the Bishop of Baltimore in 2004. And the small cross, Again, a Michael's cross is a reference to the cross that represents that, that name of Michael, from which his name is derived. And the white field uh, and the red fields represents the colors of the Polish national flag. The rose is a reference to the bishop's last name, which means rose flower in Polish, otherwise we have Rosanski. Uh, the lower portion uh, has the colors of the state of Maryland, the black and the gold, with the book and the bar symbolizing the preaching the word of God. And the model was chosen from Psalm 100, uh, and it, which it, the shield is attached, a processional cross, pierces the shield and is topped by that pontifical hat called a galero, a green for a bishop uh, with three rows of tassels that signifies his rank uh, within the church. Now, does he have specific, does he design that himself, or is that... Uh, yeah, well, it's, uh, it's, uh, we have someone, uh, a deacon, uh, Paul Sullivan, uh, is big into heraldic coat of arms and has been doing this for years uh, for many of the bishops uh, in the United States. And so he meets with each individual uh, becoming a bishop, uh, and they look at uh, their, their heritage, their nationality, things that they belong to. Uh, so they combined, when he was the bishop, uh, auxiliary bishop of the Archdiocese of Baltimore, uh, we, he took his Polish heritage, uh, as well as the fact that he was from Maryland, and using those colors. Uh, and then what happens is his shield uh, is pushed to the, to the left side of the shield, and, uh, or our right as we look to it, and the diocesan shield is attached to it. So and that becomes his new coat of arms uh, with the Diocese of Springfield. And there it is once again. Serve the Lord with gladness. You said Psalm 100? Psalm 100, serve the Lord with gladness. And I think you can see that uh, in his own expression. Uh, there's a gleam in his eye, that smile on his face. Right. Uh, he's enjoying this, he's loving it. Uh, it's a great sign, a uh, great witness to the joy of the gospel, which is what Francis uh, has called us to as well. Uh, the, there's no such thing as a sad Christian. You know, we're supposed to be happy. And we have some people, you know, who think that to be a Christian, you have to be kind of a very pious, eyes looking down. Uh, and yet it's that beam and that smile and that joy uh, of knowing there is in Christ in your own life and proclaiming uh, that victory in your own life by the way you live and the way you witness to one another. Musical director here, Lad Fife, for doing an excellent Led job. Doing a very good job. Uh, as I said, uh, summer months for a big installation like this are not the easiest time uh, to pull together choirs and musicians, but people have sacrificed. I've heard they've, uh, some gave up on celebrating their anniversaries, uh, birthdays, uh, vacations uh, to be present with us uh, and to offer their voices uh, to the praise and the glory of God and to help us lift our own minds and hearts uh, to the presence of God within this celebrating church community. Great shot of the uh, of St. Michael's and the brilliant colors and the gold backdrop and the crucifix. And there Bishop Rosansky seated in his cathedra uh, of which he will sit many more times God willing. Mm -hmm. In this, your church, O Lord, may integrity of faith, holiness of life, fraternal charity, and pure religion flourish and abide until the end. And as you do not fail to feed her with the body of your Son and with your word, so also never cease, we pray, to guide her under your protection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for just a moment.
My dear friends, as we approach the conclusion of this beautiful mass of installation, there are so many people to thank for all their work over these past two months that make today's celebration possible. Monsignor Chris Conley and each member of the planning team have left no detail unnoticed in their labor of love, in their plans for this day. The staff here at the cathedral has been so hospitable and accommodating in welcoming all of us here to worship God for his goodness to us. For all they have done, we are most grateful. We have raised our voices in such a wonderful way to praise God and give thanks. And so we thank Vlad Pfeiffer, our director of music, our musicians, and the choir of the cathedral. Thank you so much for your summer practices and for sharing your talent today at this Mass. To Cardinal Sean O'Malley, to Cardinal O'Brien, to, Car to Archbishop Vigano, and our archbishops and bishops who have honored us here by their presence and participation today, let us show our appreciation to them for joining together with us to celebrate this day. It has meant so much to me to have my family here to join us today. I thank God for them. My mom and dad, Jean and Alfred, my two brothers, Kenneth and Albert, and their families, as well as other family members, priests, deacons, religious, and friends from the Archdiocese of Baltimore. I thank you for your loving support over all these years, and especially on this day. Let us thank our Knights of Columbus 4th Degree Honor Guard, the Knights and Ladies of the Equestrian Order of the Holy Sepulchre, and the Order of Malta, and also the Knights of St. Peter Claver, for their presence, and the Ladies of St. Peter Claver, for their presence and for their daily work to support the Church and her mission. Many thanks as well to our ecumenical, interfaith, and civic leaders who are with us for this celebration. And I want to thank the various television and radio outlets who have carried this occasion into the homes of so many people. To you who represent the entire Church of Springfield with your presence at this Mass this day, I am grateful for your warm welcome from the day of the announcement to this day of installation. I look forward in the days and the months ahead to visit you in your parishes, schools, and other institutions of service, to learn more of the ways in which God is glorified through your prayer, outreach, and service of others. For all that has been, we give God our thanks. For all that will be, we ask his blessing. And finally, everyone, whether you, you are here at the cathedral or watching at home or listening on the radio, you're cordially invited to our installation reception at the Better Living Center on the grounds of the Big E in West Springfield, starting at 5 p.m. I look forward to greeting you there. Thank you, and God bless you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads for the blessing. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. <laughs>
Kiss for Mom and Dad, Bishop Mitchell Thomas Rosansky, and the installation is complete. Father Hamilton, your final thoughts? Just a great day. Uh, you can see the exuberance of the crowd, the cheer went up. Uh, everyone is just totally excited. It's a new day, it's a new dawn. Um, the sun always rises, and uh, he's now becoming our favorite son again. And uh, he is going to show us uh, a way and a path uh, with great joy and great enthusiasm and uh, with great hope for, uh, for the future, uh, continued hope for the future of the Diocese of Springfield. Uh, it couldn't be better. Well said, a new beginning. As Bishop Rosansky mentioned, the public is invited to a reception tonight in West Springfield where people will be able to meet the newly installed bishop. That reception will be held inside the Better Living Center on the grounds of the Big E. It begins at 5 o'clock. It's uh, getting close to that hour now. so. It will happen tonight, and we will be there as well. We want to thank uh, Father Bill Hamilton for joining us this afternoon and providing his insight on today's installation. Oh, for Bishop Rosansky, you were great. Thank you very much. Great to be with you, Richard. Always a pleasure. And uh, again, I'd like to just thank uh, Mark Dupont from our communications office of the Diocese of Springfield and his team and his staff that helped provide the feed uh, that we could uh, celebrate with the diocese uh, here from 22. You did an excellent job. Thank Thanks you so much. much, Father. We appreciate it.
And thank you for joining us this afternoon for this special event. Our coverage will continue online on our website at WWLP.com. We'll have a wrap up of today's Mass and live reports from the Bishop's Reception on 20th News starting at 5. Thank you and enjoy your afternoon. You've been watching live coverage of the installation of the most reverend Mitchell Thomas Rosansky, 9th Bishop of Springfield. Tune in to 22 News tonight at 5 for continuing coverage of this important day for the Diocese of Springfield. Oh,